think about what grace is um, for our devotional conversation. When we're thinking about what grace is, we can uh, connect it to what fuel is for a car, what Gatorade is for our exercising, uh, what food is for our body, what sleep is for our brain and body. Grace is basically a substance for our faith's intellect and for our conversations, thoughts, and feelings, and for our conversations body, for our body of understanding. Grace is what um, food is to our body, to that body of our faith. And the more grace that we have, the more that we are able to digest and consume and to exercise and to allow this grace to flow through our faith's body, the you know more proficient it is in understanding the scriptures, the more enduring it will be for our times in need and in times of struggle and you know more articulate it will be to another when trying to interpret and understand what they're going through you know to then give back you know something that you if in that situation would have returned to you grace is just as it says in the book of romans chapter 5 the gift of righteousness grace is the gift of righteousness and we know that the righteousness um, having defined it this righteousness is defined as the living God's kindness the living God's kindness or service to our faith's inward parts which then extend once that is is healed or is being healed to our human condition so grace is the the invisible substance and yet clearly seen through our demonstration and through our experience and you know, public and private settings of our diligence in investigating and in experimenting with the uh, philosophy that is within the Bible. And when we do have grace, when we do have um, grace, when we are receiving this, there is attached to grace, as we've seen, an increase in the knowledge or the science of the living God's will and wisdom, or there is an increase in understanding. So attached to grace is an increase of understanding or is an increase of wisdom. Uh, one verse, we can see this in one verse, in the book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40 reads, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So attached, always attached to grace is wisdom. Where one is increasing in wisdom, this is a sign. This is a sign that we are meeting all of the requirements to have the outpouring of grace upon the spirit of our mind. When we're meeting all of the requirements uh, within scripture, when it comes to our devotional growth and development, for our private, for our private communion, um, with the mind that's been within the Bible, when it's in that state of growth and of transformation and of healing and of correction, we know that we are receiving grace due to the wisdom that we are gaining from our understanding when studying these things. And from our own, um, for our own experience, and from handling and continually recycling you know, what we have gained from that experience. This is what grace is for. When we have grace applied to ourselves, and when we're receiving grace, when it's allowed to be digested, when our faith's body uh, properly digests it, we are receiving and ever growing in the wisdom of the living God's science for our human and devotional growth and development. So this is why it's important to study the Bible. This is why it's important to study the Bible. Because when we study the Bible, we receive the reward of grace. When we're not studying the Bible, we're not receiving the reward of grace. So we're not uh, being edified. We're not receiving the gift of the living God's intention. And so we're finding ourselves going to different, um, to pastor so-and-so and to, to book this and this and to find what we need to find when really... We really just need to you know, settle down and just get to the Bible.
in the book of uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 4, 5 through 9, staying with this uh, thought of uh, grace uh, deeply and intricately connected to wisdom, Proverbs 4, 5 through 9. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 through 9. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 through 9 reads, Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her. And she shall promote thee, she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Now there is a point for why wisdom is so important to the Bible. There is a point to why wisdom within the Bible and to the culture of acquiring wisdom and to exercising wisdom is so important. It's important because we will receive grace and this grace will give to us a specific crown. This grace that we give will give to us a specific crown. Now the crown is not literal. The ornament, the ornament is not a literal ornament. What we will receive are principles of well-being. These principles of well-being will fit into the scheme of our character, both uh, human or individual and devotional, and it will influence our natural ministry, our living ministry, the ministry of our presence, when we put our mind to do whatever we will do. It is the grace that we receive when putting our mind and then exercising what we have taken uh, from within our mind in our daily lives, that we receive grace. This mental exercise gives to us grace for the purpose of understanding what we're doing, which then is more stimulus for us to go back into the scriptures, to put to test and to examine what we have taken and learned so that we may receive more grace to further spend energy on developing the culture of our devotional character. It is the spending of this energy for the development of our devotional character's culture that we receive wisdom for the purpose of receiving a crown and ornament for our faith. Again, this is not a literal crown. This is not a literal ornament. Wisdom is nothing literal that we can physically touch. Wisdom is mental that we can perceive and demonstrate through our thoughts, feelings, actions, and behaviors. Whatever this crown is, this crown is to better define our actions, our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. And everybody's crowned that everybody will receive something different because not everybody is the same. Yet, the process of acquiring is the same for every, in, every individual. We all have brains. We all have a faith that is intelligent. We may not know it. We may be suppressing it, but it has a character. And we all have an experience that we have to experience as human and as devotional beings. And the process of all of these things accomplished is through putting the mind to test and proving what it has understood by examination for the purpose of receiving the substance of grace for furthering the understanding of what we are inquiring about and receiving the data to analyze, bringing that right back to the scriptures and repeating the process for more grace and just repeating the process that we may grow and get, as it says, wisdom and understanding for the purpose of giving to us an ornament for our crown, a crown for our faith, that we would be a diadem or a shining beacon, pillar, whatever you want to say, for the hands of the Creator working within. Again, the fulfillment of the New Covenant promise. So turning to um, Proverbs 25 and 12, one sentence, as an airing of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a reprover upon an obedient heir. And so this ornament that we're seeing, the ornament of being a reprover, this is an ornament of, of justice. 
for our faith. It is an ornament of justice because we're developing a trait of character. We're developing a trait of character, not simply to be a reprover for another, but to be a reprover for self. Meddling in the scriptures and exercising what the scriptures are, are saying, uh, getting their point, understanding their context, uh, digging into that, we are actually gaining wisdom on how to behave. Gaining wisdom on how to behave because um, the philosophy within the Bible is for um, human and devotional behavior. We will then be able to offer something wise to the ears of another in addition to ourselves. So you can call this ornament of uh, reprover, whatever you want to call it, um, one that is uh, patient, patient in well being, a listener. Um, categorize that however you will. But when applying self to the wisdom that is within the Bible, what will develop is an ear that will listen and an ear, and an ear that will return um, according to what was heard. And in a way that is empathic, in a way that is benevolent, and in a way that, that heals. Again, Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, 21 through 24. Proverbs 16, 21 through 24. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, 21 through 24. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Now, all of these verses are the ornaments or are specific crowns that will be gained when applying grace to our faith's intellect and to our conversations, thoughts, and feelings. When receiving and when applying grace, we will increase in learning, our soul will be fed, and we will care to feed and make sure other souls are fed. And that making sure that our soul and other souls are fed is not always necessarily through uh, quoting something or through providing something to read. It can be a demonstration of behavior it can be in response to an action, whether it is hurtful to us or not, response to an action. It can be through the demonstration of our understanding of what somebody else is going through. This is how we actually truly um, expose our connection to the philosophy within the Bible. It is not by the um, pointing to somebody a, a scripture. This is what it says in the Bible, so this is what you need to do. How do we, by our experience, validate that scripture to the point where we don't need to quote it anymore? We can put that in a modern 2022 sense to give someone the essence of it so that they're not feeling as though they're being imposed with some sort of religion when really it is just the need for them to have presented to them a human being and a devotional character that can resonate with their struggle. So when we're going through um, our process of growth and development, these are the types of ornaments that we are to receive. This is what we're to receive as we handle the things that are within the Bible, stepping away from what we believe as to be true and learning true, struggling to learn true. We're developing wisdom. And this wisdom is actually adding a character that is um, empathic. This um, character that is empathic is an exercise of empathy with self so, so that when it comes time, we can exercise empathy with another. And exercising empathy with another, we can benevolently um, speak to them, demonstrate to them, return to them, guide them, counsel them, be with them. So when we're not studying the things in the Bible, when we're not putting into practice um, how the Bible says it needs to be understood, and how our own faith needs to understand how the Bible needs to be understood. For the philosophy that we are to receive um, within, when we're not doing this, we are truly robbing our human being from the justice that is within the correction of these words. Because we need something outside of us. 
we we can do as much as we can do relying on self but we will always go in a continual circle of falling back into former negative habits and embracing unpleasant thoughts and feelings because there's nothing greater than what is within us. We can battle that, we can get as far as we can go, but there needs to be more. And so the reason we you know, ought to care for taking our faith through this struggle, why, why we should actually embrace caring for this struggle of understanding who and what our faith's character is, is because there is a marriage um, that we are to forward. And everything that we have been studying thus far, um, learning what the definition of justification is, learning what the process of justification is, learning the specific name and voice that our faith needs to rely on, going through an experience of relying on that faith, uh, voice, that name, that philosophy for the purpose of receiving grace, receiving grace for the purpose of receiving wisdom to acquire and to exercise and to um, share in moments of need, whether with ourselves or with uh, another mind. The, this is all completely necessary so that we can allow the marriage between our conversation and the spirit or character of our faith's mind. Again, this is all for the purpose of forwarding a marriage between our conversation, between our conversation and the spirit or character of our faith's mind. And this is a principle that is embedded within the Bible because when acquiring wisdom, you're actually growing fond of self. When allowing the Bible's philosophy to work within the inward parts, when allowing the Bible's philosophy to not simply just rest, but to work and in working to edify and to edify, to heal and to heal, to inform and to inform, to correct and to correct, to reform. And from reforming a changing or a redeeming of the, the, the thought process and from the changing or the redeeming of the thought process to now the educating into the now the the counseling of the human being for the purpose of healing the human condition this this only this is only possible as we allow a marriage to take place between our conversations thoughts and feelings or between our conversation and the spirit or character of our faith's intellect this is a philosophy embedded within the bible because when separated from our traditional thought when separated from what we traditionally believe, when separated from our opinions, that for some reason, um, whether the tie is emotional or whether the tie is um, familiar in some sort of um, unjust sense, that to the point where we can't let it go for, for getting our, our thoughts clear and our mind uh, embracing a higher point of view, we, we retard the process. We, we're, we're, we're stumbling over the process of the intention within the Bible, which is a process of getting to know or growing in familiarity with our faith and with our faith's culture. Growing in familiarity with our faith and with our faith's culture, we are getting in tune with the character or with the nature, quote unquote, of the living God's devotional character. Doing so allows us to step into a field that is the reason why we are so interested in the Bible. It is the character of the living God that we see lacks we, in us somehow, some way, some shape or form, there is some lacking um, within us and there is something, something right about the living God's mind, the living God's heart, the living God's intention that draws us um, for whatever reason it draws us to. Now this, this drawing, to, this drawing um, let it be fine, it, it's fine. But in order for that drawing to be as complete as it should be, there needs to be a marriage between our genuine um, character and nature of our faith and our conversation. Minus everything that we have been told, minus everything that we have been brought up with, minus everything that we clutch to as a crutch. It all needs to be let go so that the intention of the words within the Bible can work. When this intention works, 
we will start to see the healing. Slow, and it will be, you know, it will progress, but we will start to see that healing. And so entering into the book of Malachi, Malachi chapter 2, 14 through 16. Malachi chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. And this is the principle that I carry with me and even have, um, when I write my poetry, this, 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 this principle is just etched within my heart because it's just everything that I completely relate to from my experience as a human being and as learning the things uh, that are within the Bible. Malachi 2, 14 through 16, Yet you say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. One conceiveth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that you deal not treacherously. Now the point um, of dipping into this verse is that there is a philosophy within the Bible to where... The individual needs to recognize that they have a spouse that they need to acknowledge and that they need to grow in deeper communion with. This is the spouse of our covenant with the living God. Entering into anything concerning the Bible, we have an, an intention, whether we know it or not, of, of covenanting with, the, in, with the, an intention or a purpose of being better as human beings and as being better devotionally so long as we remain on point with that covenant with that promise that we make we will do good the process of justification is our maintenance we're maintaining not alone though we're not ma maintaining alone entering into whatever belief we have we enter into our belief with a spouse this spouse is the wife of our youth if we are female it is the husband of our youth the wife of our youth, the husband of our youth, it is the spirit of our mind. This is why he continually, repeatedly says, discard not your spirit. Our conversation is married to the spirit of our mind. Our conversation is married to the spirit of our mind. The more that our conversation receives whatever pleasure it will receive without acknowledging the spirit of our mind, the spirit of our mind will fail. When, our, when the spirit of our mind will fail, this is when our conversation goes to various churches, various books, various pastors, various thoughts and adventures on discovering itself. When its wife, its husband, its spouse, it's right there, but it's withering. It's being neglected. The philosophy of the Bible would have us put away everything that we know to be true concerning our religion and concerning whatever theology we grasp to. Putting that away and allowing our spouse to know us and us to know our spouse. When we can know the spirit of our mind and what we genuinely will believe concerning the things within the scriptures, the spirit of our mind will take care of itself. The experience will take care of itself. And it will only result in the feeding or the healing of our conversation. Our conversation is to marry the spirit of our faith's intellect. The development that we are to receive through the process of justification is for bringing our conversation and, and the spirit of our faith's intellect together for a marriage. When these two are married, we do not need anything else anymore. Who else do I have in heaven but you and on earth? There is no one. We will say this psalm, and we will actually mean it. Right now, we can say it. It's not actually true. Because while we're saying it, we're still depending on the creed of pastor so-and-so and the philosophy of ancient whatever, whatever. When wisdom becomes the examiner, when our experience can digest what it is learning, 
we are entering into a very solemn marriage that should not be broken between our conversation and the spirit of our faith's mind. And this is the next aspect of justification. And so this is um, a principle when we're hearing in the Bible, um, no adultery, no adultery. The principle, because the Bible is not primarily natural, primarily secular. The connotation is to you, personally. The connotation is to me, personally. When we have our heart set on anything concerning the living God, when we have our heart determined to let the living God's character be within us and to learn how it can, we enter into a covenant, not simply with the living God, but we enter into a covenant with ourself. We don't really know it, but our faith is entering into a marriage covenant with our conversation for the two to remain faithful to both. If we can keep these two faithful, we can experience the intended healing. If we can keep these two faithful, and if we can allow the thoughts and feelings of our conversation to grow and the thoughts and feelings of our faith to grow and if we can allow the two in our living experience to give us back wisdom and to give them wisdom in their union this covenant will be fulfilled tremendously and the proverb through knowledge shall the just be delivered again the proverb through knowledge shall the just be delivered will become true in our life. Growing fond of the science within the Bible for the purpose of receiving grace and for the purpose of receiving wisdom is so that our faith and our body of understanding can form a solid marriage to keep us ever tied to the living God without needing any sort of life support. We don't need any sort of outside stimulus, is what the Bible is saying. The, the stimulus and the experience is to come from within, outward, so that from outward it can go back in, and so that the cycle can repeat itself, so that our human and devotional development can continue um, justly. And so let that justice um, be. You know, we're, we're letting a lot get in the way of the intention of the living God when we really don't need to. Let that feeling of darkness exist. Know nothing, be nothing, so that you know by the end of the week you can actually be something and know something and be somewhere. Mm -hmm.